Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer. Today we're here for yet another first impressions video because the Ottomans have just been announced for Civilization VI, so the first look for them came out a few hours ago. If you haven't seen it yet, I will be sure to link it in the video description below, so go check that out if you haven't seen it yet, but I'm just gonna go over some of the stuff we've seen in the first look video, and I'm gonna give some of my general first thoughts and impressions. Um, this, These are just my very general first thoughts. I've literally watched the video a single time, and I'm just gonna kind of give give my, my face value of what I think of the Ottomans so far in Civ VI. So let's go ahead and let's start off with their uh, their abilities screen over here. Um, where was it? Right there. And look, we even got a good old Suleiman here. I must say that Suleiman looks pretty cool. Much much better than, uh, what's her name? Christina of Sweden from last week. Jesus. Uh, I, I just can't get over how ugly she was. <laughs> but Suleiman, he, he's looking pretty magnificent. And I, I must say, I, I really like the hat. So, uh, so yeah. So Suleiman leads the Ottomans in Civilization VI. And his first ability is known as Grand Vizier. And it actually gives him an exclusive unique governor with military and diplomatic abilities. And he also gains the Janissary unique unit when the gunpowder technology is researched. So let's go ahead and find where his special governor is. Yeah, right here, they, oh, maybe not. Right there, they show the tree that uh, Ibrahim, which is his special governor, has. And you can see his, his starting bonus is plus 20% production to all military units in the city. So this alone, I think, is ridiculously strong, especially in the early game. You can push out warriors or, you know, swordsmen or anything really fast if you go for Ibrahim. So I think he's going to be very good for early game rushes. And just throughout the entire game, 20% production towards all military units is pretty strong. Um, he also has Head Falconer, which makes it so that all friendly units fighting within the city's territory gain plus 5 combat strength. Once again, very strong. Um, Sarasker grants all units within 10 tiles of the city center plus 10 combat strength when attacking defensible districts. Once again, insanely strong. That is very good for sieging. Um, so even if you're able to put that, if you're able to put this guy on the edge of your empire, then you can get this ability that's going to extend into some neighboring empire, and you're going to get 10 combat strength when you're attacking their districts. And I, I, I believe that the city center counts as a defensible district, so 10 additional combat strength when attacking a city center is absolutely ridiculous. And then how it could work is as you take cities, you can just move him into the into the next city that you take, and then that, that aura of 10 tiles will be expanded throughout more of their empire, and you can just use that to keep gaining this bonus as you conquer someone. So I think this ability is going to be insanely strong for domination. Uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce these two, but uh, this one makes it so that when you establish him in an allied foreign capital, alliance leveling rate is increased with the owner. That's okay. I don't think that's going to be that great. I still think it's better to make use of these combat bonus ones than it is to really make use of this one. Um, this one makes it so that when established in a foreign capital, grievances from the owner against you are reduced by one more per turn. That one could be good, actually. Um, if you're going to be going domination, you're going to be getting a lot of grievances, because remember, the, the same warmongering penalties are not going to be consistent with Gathering Storm. That's going to change, and we're now going to have the grievance system, which... I don't know too much about yet, but grievances are, are going to be what dictates whether or not someone hates you. So being able to reduce grievances per turn a little bit faster whenever you're playing Domination is going to be a good thing. And I think that Ibrahim could be useful for that. And his final ability is known as Grand Vizier, and it makes it so that when established in a foreign capital, none of the owner cities exert loyalty pressure on your cities. Once again, very strong for domination, especially if you're going naval domination. So I would assume that you can put this guy in the capital even when you're at war with somebody. So if you put this in whoever you're at war with's capital, then you can take their cities and not have to worry about loyalty pressure being exerted on you at all, which is absolutely ridiculous. And I, I also wonder, so if you establish him in a city, if, if you establish him in a foreign capital, do you still get the Sarasker bonus? Because then that could be really, that can make it very easy to siege capitals because you would be able, you would get no extra loyalty pressure exerted on by the cities and you would get plus 10 combat strength around that city. So for all the cities around the capital and the capital itself, you would get a lot of additional combat strength. So I think that this could be insane. I guess Head Falconer would probably technically work as well then, wouldn't it? All friendly units fighting within the city's territory gain plus five combat strength. Yeah, so if these two abilities still work when he's in a foreign capital, then I think he is going to be one of the most insane governors and easily the best domination governor in the entire game. He, he blows Victor out of the water in terms of usefulness. Um, so I really hope that these abilities work as I've just talked about, because if so, he's going to be insane. And I think he is easily one of the strongest parts of the Ottomans.
Coming back over to his abilities, his second ability is known as Great Turkish Bombard, and it makes it, makes it so that he gains plus 50% production towards siege units. All siege units gain plus 5 combat strength against di district defenses. Conquer cities do not lose population, and cities founded by the or cities not founded by the Ottomans gain plus 1 amenity and uh, plus 1 or plus 4 loyalty per turn. So Great Turkish Bombard, I think, is kind of a mixed bag. I generally, I mean, siege units are very nice in Civ 6, don't get me wrong, I, I tend to like siege units, but <laughs> most of the time, as I mentioned in, in the early war video, if you just make a few battering rams in the early game and you're smart enough to not lose them, you can use those battering rams alone to kind of just take you through the entire game and use battering rams and cavalry to steamroll through pretty much all district defenses throughout the entire game, so... I don't generally find myself producing many siege units because they're really fragile, they die very fast, and compared to the bombards, there's just it's a lot easier to lose them than it is to or not not the bombards. Compared to the battering rams, it's a lot easier to lose like most other siege units than it is to lose a battering ram. Because if you pair a battering ram up with a melee unit, then that melee unit has to be the one that dies, and somebody has to move on that tile in order for you to lose the battering ram. So that's just kind of my, my general soapbox about <laughs> about siege type units. So for that reason, I generally don't find myself building very many siege units, so I don't know how good this part is going to be. I mean, don't get me wrong, plus 50% reduction towards siege units is definitely a very strong thing, and plus 5 combat strength against district defenses is also very good, but it's kind of just me doubting the usefulness of uh, siege units. But maybe with these bonuses, then that would give me much more of a reason to produce siege units, and that still could be good. Um, so pretty much the, the synopsis on that part of the ability is that I, I don't doubt that it's good, but I just doubt how much I'm actually going to use it and how useful siege units are in comparison to things like battering rams and siege towers. Uh, the second half of the ability, though, is, in my opinion, absolutely insane. So, Conquered cities do not lose population. Alright, that's already very good. You're not going to be, whenever you take a city, you pretty much get the full benefit of that city. You don't have to spend a lot of turns building it back up after you take it. Uh, I would imagine that it still probably raises some of the buildings, and uh, I don't think it raises districts whenever you take cities, but it probably still uh, raises some of the city center buildings whenever you take cities. But not losing population is very good, because then that means your tile yields are going to be immediately better than they normally would be, because you have more tiles that you can work, because you have higher population. So, very strong, I think. Um, cities not founded by the Ottomans gain plus one amenity and plus four loyalty per turn. Once again, extremely strong, I think, because that's going to help deal with war weariness because you're going to be gaining extra amenities in those cities that you've just captured. You're not going to have to worry about loyalty as much because you're gaining plus four loyalty per turn. And note that unlike some of the other uh, leaders in the game that gain the loyalty bonus for, like, cities that are, what's the word, occupied, maybe not occupied, that, like, haven't, like, you haven't made peace yet, so they haven't ceded the city yet, like, Persia, I believe, only gets their loyalty bonus when the city is um, still being occupied, or I can't think of the word for the life of me, but this bonus appears to apply for the entirety of the game as long as you own the city, so even after you make peace, you're going to still get plus four loyalty per turn and plus one amenity. So that could mean that if you go on like an early game spree and you take a bunch of cities early on, then throughout that entire, uh, like throughout the entire rest of the game, you're going to need one less amenity in those cities because you're going to be gaining plus one because it wasn't you who originally founded the city. So I think that's very strong. The plus four loyalty per turn just kind of stacks up with the Grand Vizier to make it, <laughs> to make loyalty even less of an issue. And that's something that I very much like with Suleiman. And I'll talk about that whenever I talk about his unique units a little bit. Um, well, pretty much right now. So, Suleiman's first unique unit is the Janissary, and it replaces the Musketmen. It starts with a free promotion, stronger and cheaper than the Musketmen, and um, to train a, uh, a Janissary, you must have a population of at least two, and um, if it's one of the cities that you founded, it, uh, that city will lose a population when you train a Janissary, but if it's a city that you've conquered, it will not lose a population, which is very interesting. So, straight off of the Janissary here, let's see if they can, if I can find where they show it, which I believe is back here somewhere, yes, so right there. So it has 60 melee strength. Let me pull up what the melee strength of a musketman is. So the normal melee strength of a musketman is 55, which is, that's pretty okay. Um, it has two movement as well, so movement, there's no movement change, I believe. Oh no, it was, it was stronger and cheaper than musketman, I believe, is what, is what the description said. So yeah, it gets five additional combat strength over musketman, still has the same movement, and you get the free promotion. I forget what the tier one promotions are. I guess it's a melee class unit, so it actually has decent tier one promotions. So I think that overall the Janissary is going to be pretty good. 
The thing that does suck though is that it does consume the population when you train it. So you'll see here the city size 4 and whenever they train it, it goes down to size 3. So I think that definitely does suck. But the thing to keep in mind there is that if it's a city that you've not founded, then you don't lose that population. So that just kind of further works into the whole snowball mechanic of the Ottomans of the more cities you take that like aren't yours originally, so the more cities that other people have founded that you've conquered, the stronger and stronger you get as the Ottomans. So once again, if you go to early war with the Ottomans and you take a bunch of cities and you have a lot of turns to build them up, by the time you get to the Janissaries, then you can train those Janissaries without having to lose that population, and you just have a much stronger and cheaper musketman that you can train in those cities for no additional um, loss. So I think that that's going to be a really good strategy. I think early war is just is 100% the way to go with the Ottomans so far as what I'm seeing. But yeah, overall for the Janissary... I think it's pretty good. It's it's probably not going to be like one of the, you know, the outstanding insane units in the game, but it definitely is going to be a good one and for that I can respect it. Suleiman's other unique unit is the Barbary Corsair, which replaces the Privateer. Um, it costs no movement to pillage to coastal raid, or yeah, to pillage, so to coastal raid was what you do with um, with any naval unit. Um, one thing to note is that pillaging has been changed to scale throughout the game, so pillaging in the late game is actually going to be more worthwhile, and you're going to get a and like a increasing yield from pillaging the longer uh, the game goes on. So later in the game, it actually is worth it to pillage, so that is something that's nice. Um, and it cannot be seen unless adjacent to it, which I'm pretty sure that's a proper of the privateer as well. I could be wrong, but uh, if I am, just let me know in the comment section below. But the Barbary Corsair, let me find it, which is right here. I'm pretty sure that this has the same stats as the privateer. Let me just check real fast here. So yeah, the the, Bar the Barbary Corsair does indeed have the same stats. Uh, it does say it's, it does says, oh man, I can't speak English. It does say that it has seven movement here, but that probably could just be due to promotions and like the Great Lighthouse or something. Normally a privateer would have five movement, but I don't believe that this by default has any extra movement. I believe it's probably just because of promotions and other things in the game. So I think that this unit is, I don't know, it's kind of underwhelming. I believe it is unlocked earlier as well. Does it say what it's unlocked with in the little description thing over here? I don't believe it does. Um, no, it doesn't say. But they, they did say vocally that it is unlocked earlier. So I guess that's a little bit nice. Maybe you can use that as a, some sort of power spike. But I think it kind of works well that they have a naval unique unit by, like that because one of the big things with naval domination in Rise and Fall, and I, if, if you've watched me for a while, you, you probably know exactly what I'm going to say, but naval domination as a whole is not exactly the easiest thing in Rise and Fall because of the loyalty system. It is generally so hard to get like a solid clump of cities along a coast compared to, because with how loyalty works, it's a lot less beneficial to take cities in a line which you normally would on a coast, you know, if there's like a relatively straight coastline, then you would be taking cities in a line. That is a lot less beneficial than taking cities in a clump just because of how loyalty works and because of, you know, the general distance between cities when you do that as a pair, as, um, as opposed to taking them in the clump. So because of those reasons, the naval domination has been kind of hurt a little bit with Rise and Fall, but considering the other abilities that the Ottomans have to deal with loyalty, like with the Grand Vizier and with this great Turkish Bombard ability, I think that they can play naval domination and really not be that scared of loyalty. So I think that the Barbary Corsair fits in with them well. I just wish it was a little bit stronger. I wish it had like a slightly higher combat strength or maybe a little bit more movement or something of the sort. Um... I don't think it's terrible, but I just don't think it's going to be all that special. I think that the Janissary is probably the better of their two unique units. Um, but nonetheless, the Barbary Corsair is an option that you have, and it is one that I think is at least decent. And their unique building is known as the Grand Bazaar, and no, it's not the map from Battlefield 3, although that was, or was that from Battlefield 4? I don't exactly remember, but that was a fun map. <laughs> but the Grand Bazaar is um, a building unique to the Ottomans, and you accumulate one extra st strategic resource for every different type of strategic resource this city has improved, and you receive one amenity for uh, every resource that this city has improved. I think that the Grand Bazaar, once again, it just fits in and it seems very strong because you get those extra strategic resources. So remember now in Gathering Storm, strategic resources are a more finite thing. I don't think they're necessarily finite, but your stockpile of them is a finite thing. So you need to have so many um, 
so you, you you accumulate strategic resources per turn and they accumulate in a stockpile and then you use that stockpile to construct units so i believe like for the janissary i believe that the janissary takes 20 nitre to construct so building the grand bazaar in a city is going to make it so that you accumulate one extra of each resource in that city per turn so i don't know what the default is i want to say it's either one or two so you'll get effectively you know either 100 or 50 percent more which both of which are pretty good i could be totally wrong on those numbers but even so one extra per turn is definitely pretty good because the more cities you build this in the more and more that benefit stacks up so i think that's going to be very useful for domination victory and the other big part receive one amenity for every luxury resource this city has improved once again very strong for domination victory and just dealing with uh, war weariness that's very good in general just because the happier your citizens are the the higher your yields are across the board if you're unsure of why go out and uh check my um, um check out my amenities in depth video and I, I where i talk about that a little bit more but yeah i think the grand bazaar is very good it just fits in generally well with the ottomans play style the extra strategic resources can help fuel your war machine a little bit and the extra amenities can help combat war weariness and make sure that your people People are generally very happy so for that I think it is quite good one thing I didn't mention is that it replaces the bank and you probably will have a decent number of commercial hubs on Suleiman just because you are gonna need a lot of gold to keep up the maintenance on your army so once again it just kind of all fits in so to just kind of recap my general thoughts on Suleiman and the Ottomans, I think that the Ottomans are going to be very strong for domination. Outside of domination, I don't think they have anything special. <laughs> like, there's pretty much nothing going for them outside of domination, but I think that they have a lot of stuff working well for them that could make them one of the best domination civs in the game. They have the ability for some early war by getting that additional percentage-based production boost towards military units from the Grand Vizier, so I think that that's really strong. And that early game push is then going to get you more bonuses because of the additional amenities you'll have and the ability to construct Janissaries in those cities later on in the game for yet another power spike. Um, they don't really have to worry about loyalty too much because they get this additional plus four loyalty per turn. They can use the Grand Vizier as well to get some extra, where is it? They can use the Grand Vizier, to, yeah, to get some extra combat strength in their cities. They can use it to get combat strength when attacking enemy cities. They can make loyalty even less of an issue. And I just think overall they're really strong. Um, there are some things that could definitely influence how strong they are. Um, as I mentioned, if... If putting the Grand Vizier in, or like Ibrahim, yeah, the Grand Vizier in uh, a foreign capital still gives you Head Falconer and Sarasker in like the tiles of that city and the tiles around it, then I think that Ottomans are probably going to be top tier in domination because there's just a lot of stuff working for them that makes very makes them very strong in domination. And it is going to be a little, it's going to take a little bit of skill and knowledge of, you know, governors to make to make Ibrahim work very well, but if you are able to make him work very well, then I think he's going to be incredibly strong. The other thing that I'm wondering is, you know, if the enemy, or if someone else has a governor in their capital already, can you still put Ibrahim there? I would imagine that the answer is probably yes, because I believe that there can be multiple copies of um, Mani in a, in a single city-state, so I would imagine that this still works, that even if there is a governor already in the city, you can probably still put Ibrahim there, so... If that doesn't work, though, then that's definitely going to limit him. And also, as I mentioned, if these abilities don't give the bonus in foreign cities as well, then I think that's going to weaken them quite a bit. But assuming that they do, I think that Ottomans are going to be easily one of the single best domination civs in the game. Will they be S-tier? Uh, it's questionable, because the Barbary Corsair isn't that great. The Janissary seems very good, um, but their their production towards siege units is it's okay, but it's not outstanding. Like I think that some other um, civs have other better domination abilities, but regardless of that, I still think that they are going to be very good. I'd probably I'm probably gonna preliminary estimate prelim, preliminarily estimate that they're probably gonna be an A or B tier civ. I'm leaning more towards A, but as I mentioned, I think that their versatility is pretty much nothing. They're 100% a domination civ, like no doubt in my mind about it. Um, and uh, aside from that, yeah, I, I'm I'm very excited for the Ottomans. They're they're not as like cool and fun as some of the other civs in the game are that or some of the other Gathering Storm civs are. Um, I think just because you know they're not like wacky, they don't have any ridiculous strategies that change the way you play the game. Um, but I think that they are just generally very strong civ and one that will still be fun to play. So I am looking forward to playing them once Gathering Storm comes out. So thank you everyone for watching, I have been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, if not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for more Civilization 6 content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.